Is this true? Absolutely. Toyota has admitted to large-scale falsification, once again embroiling Toyota in a fraud scandal, completely tarnishing the reputation of Japanese manufacturing. Recently, the Toyota subsidiary, Daihatsu, disclosed a 162-page report revealing falsification in key component testing, such as safety airbags, brake systems, involving 64 models and three engines including vehicles from Toyota, Mazda, and Subaru, regardless of whether they are in production, under development, or discontinued, following the incident. Due to the severity of the falsification, Daihatsu's president, Ichiro Ofun, and Toyota's chairman, Takishi Achiyamada, personally apologized. It's unexpected that the once glorious Japanese manufacturing appears so vulnerable in the face of integrity. In the face of brand image and market share, Toyota's choice to conceal the truth not only violates business ethics, but also demonstrates extreme irresponsibility towards consumers. Looking at the Japanese manufacturing industry, in recent years, Japanese automakers and component companies have frequently faced quality issues. Events such as the Takata airbag incident have garnered global attention, while companies like Kobe Steel and Mitsubishi have also faced scrutiny due to falsification. The continuous string of falsification scandals within the Toyota Group has once again cast a shadow over the proud halo of Japanese manufacturing, fundamentally undermining its image in the eyes of consumers. This behavior inevitably raises the question of what has happened to Japanese manufacturing. This incident undoubtedly deals a significant blow to Toyota and reveals some deep-seated issues within the Japanese manufacturing industry. It's important to note that Japan is a country that pursues ultimate perfection, and the successive scandals not only affect the survival of the companies themselves but also force unsuspecting users to bear safety risks and economic losses. For Toyota, effectively managing internal operations and quality control to prevent similar incidents from happening again will be a crucial challenge they must face. Regarding the falsification in the Japanese manufacturing industry, it's truly bewildering. Just focusing on the automotive sector, there have been numerous revelations, such as Mitsubishi and Hino falsifying fuel consumption data, Lexus falsifying vehicle monitoring systems, Akabano falsifying brake systems, and Takata falsifying airbags, and so on. What has happened to Japan? What reasons have led them to this situation today? From a rational analysis standpoint, I have outlined three main reasons. Firstly, the first point is the bloated and inefficient large conglomerates in Japan. Almost all industries in Japan are controlled by a few large financial groups leading to what? Many times, the upstream and downstream links are all within the same conglomerate, everyone is familiar with each other, and within a framework with almost no mobility, many have decades-old relationships. This provides a natural environment for falsification, as they are all just employees, looking out for each other, and when something goes wrong, there's always someone higher up to take the blame. In other words, Japan's super-large industrial conglomerates have determined that many manufacturing processes have no market supervision or inspection. Secondly, extreme insensitivity to market feedback. To what extent are they insensitive? Let me give you an example. For instance, in the production of memory chips, they once dared to offer a 25-year warranty. Today, with electronic products, if something lasts for three years without becoming obsolete, that's considered good. As long as you have a basic understanding of market demand, it's impossible to claim that you can produce a 25-year chip, right? But that's exactly what Japan did, resulting in a 200% expenditure of manpower and resources to improve performance that you don't actually need. Such examples abound in Japan's manufacturing industry, leading to high costs for Japanese products, while the perceived quality is not truly understood. Thirdly, Japan's extremely arrogant and stubborn character. 
The simplest example is that the whole world is developing new energy concepts, and it's needless to say about our new energy. The whole world is at the forefront, even the US, despite being comprehensively behind, is gritting its teeth to develop new energy concepts. General Motors and Ford are both making a desperate transition. What does this indicate? The mainstream trend worldwide is to acknowledge the lithium battery route, and a formidable momentum has been formed around the upstream and downstream industry chain for lithium battery-powered vehicles. But what is Japan doing? They are still insisting on playing with hydrogen energy. Does anyone pay attention to them? No. But do they have any intention of changing? No, they don't. Even at this critical juncture. Toyota's Akio Toyota is still going around saying that electric cars have no future. So, on one hand, you lack an understanding of the market, and a large amount of time and effort is misdirected. The technological level is difficult to sustain, and on the other hand, there is an unyielding arrogance and stubbornness. Simultaneously, the internal industrial structure lacks market supervision and inspection. Besides falsification, does Japanese manufacturing have a second path to take? Finally, I want to say that the incident of Toyota falsifying 174 safety data points for its 64 models is the turning point in the global decline of Toyota's automobiles. You can wait and see. Chinese companies like Huawei and BYD will undoubtedly give Toyota a run for its money. Currently, with the annual production of traditional fuel vehicles dropping by 2 million units globally, it is equivalent to a major factory evaporating every year. In the face of this declining sales situation, instead of improving quality, Toyota has attempted to use data, including safety airbags, to deceive consumers, trying to delay the time for traditional fuel vehicles. Toyota actually understands better than anyone else that the supply chain and product advantages built on engines and transmissions in Japan no longer exist in the face of new energy vehicles. The competition for new energy vehicles lies in intelligent travel, computing power, AI, and artificial intelligence. Many traditional fuel vehicle owners may not have realized this problem yet, but from Toyota's recent desperate statements, it can be seen that their days are numbered. A company with absolute strength and competitive advantage is often quiet, just like Huawei, many people are still saying that Japanese cars have excellent quality and are still profitable. Don't you pay attention to the trends at all? The elimination of Nokia in the smartphone industry was not due to its poor quality, but because it no longer suited the era. This is the current situation for Toyota, just think, wasn't Toyota built on the advantage of its hybrid technology back in the day? Mercedes-Benz, BMW, and General Motors formed a joint company to compete against Toyota, but they were not successful. Now, Toyota is at a loss facing electric cars from China. Its only way out might be to cooperate obediently with Huawei. In fact, Toyota has already been tentatively cooperating with BYD. This is Toyota seeking a way out from the oil and electricity shortage faced by Japanese car manufacturers. Don't believe it? Just wait and see. At the current pace, in just five years, Huawei and BYD could give Toyota a run for its money. Money.